I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This reaction is what's known as an example of a Favorsky rearrangement. So Favorsky rearrangement. And a Favorsky rearrangement is principally a rearrangement of cyclopropanones. An additional feature of Favorsky rearrangements is that typically you have a contraction of the ring system. So notice the ring system here is six carbons, but in our product it's only five. So sodium carbonate can act as a base in this reaction. So I'm just going to put B with a minus to indicate that we're using a base. So that way I don't have to draw out the full formula. And from here we have an alpha carbon position, which is going to be more acidic than most carbon hydrogen bonds, allowing us to deprotonate at that position. So if deprotonation can occur at this alpha carbon hydrogen. And this is going to bring down these electrons, allowing us to kick up these pi electrons to the oxygen. So then the product of this transformation is going to be what's known as an enolate, which if you've taken organic chemistry before, you've likely seen the formation of enolates or in other different types of mechanisms. So here we now have a new carbon to carbon double bond as well as a negatively charged oxygen, and this part is known as an enolate. And then in typical enolate fashion, what will happen is these electrons that are now located on this oxygen can come back down, allowing us to do chemistry with this carbon-carbon double bond. So at this stage, what will happen is these pi electrons will move and attack this carbon, and then do similar to a substitution reaction, where this chloride, being a good leaving group, can be kicked off. And this is actually how we form what's known as a cyclopropanone. So remember previously I mentioned that Favorsky rearrangements typically follow some sort of cyclopropanone formation. And now we have formed a three-membered ring at this position where this carbon attacked this carbon through these pi electrons, and then now we regenerated our ketone at this position, which is what's known as a cyclopropanone. So from here, now what we have generated is mostly this six-membered ring with a three-membered ring fused inside of it, and this is known as a cyclopropanone. But notice that this is going to be an incredibly strained ring where we have an sp2 hybridized carbon with two other sp3 hybridized carbons, so the bond angles aren't going to be the ideal geometry for this type of carbon. And because of that, this will cause this to open up. And in fact, these electrons can come over here to create a brand new carbon to carbon alkene. And in doing so, this is gonna free up these electrons to come and make a carbon oxygen triple bond. And if you're familiar with gases, you know that carbon monoxide is a carbon to oxygen triple bond. So that's what we're forming, this gas, which will leave as a gas in the system. And now we have contracted our ring to make our new five-membered ring with this alkene. And we have this driving force that is so powerful that will allow us to do this transformation because we're freeing up the ring strain as a part of this cyclopropanone and also generating a gas which would leave the system. Especially if you perform this reaction in an open flask, Le Chatelier's principle would lead us to believe that since we're removing products from the system, this would drive the reaction forward. And again, this is known as a Favorsky rearrangement. And if you're interested in the publication of this this work, it came from the Journal of Organic Chemistry and was published in 1971 in volume 36 on page 2021. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. If you have any ideas, drop it as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.